Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlecake Martial Arts Radio. And today, Andrew and I are going to answer the question definitively for all time. Oh, boy. What makes a great martial arts movie? If you're new to the show, thank you for joining us. You can find all the things that we do here at Whistlekick at whistlekick.com, including our store. It's one of the ways that we monetize all this stuff and pay the bills. You can use the code PODCAST15 to save 15% on a shirt, or you've got a hat over there. We've got some other things. Actually, you're going to see one of the things in a little bit. We're going to do something kind of fun and different on this episode, so stick around. If you're listening, uh, when we get there, you, you might want to watch this one. Mm. Who knows? Maybe. Right. Uh, if you want to go deeper on, probably not this episode, but maybe other episodes, especially our guest interview episodes, you can visit whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We bring you two episodes each and every week in order to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world. If that is a value to you, yeah, you could buy something. You could also share episodes with people. It's one of the ways that we grow the show. And we also have a Patreon with exclusive behind-the-scenes content, bonus merchandise, all kinds of cool stuff, and you can find out more at patreon.com slash whistlecake. I had to think for a minute. <laughs> all righty. Let's set the table. Mm -hmm. Sure. Which is a pun that they don't even realize yet. Correct. And then we can take Get our next it. step. Yeah. Now, I think you said that this question came in from a listener. Yep. This question, um, topic suggestion, not sure. question, came in from Mark Warner. And his question. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Uh, his, his email to me said, you guys should discuss what makes a great martial arts movie, what makes a fun martial arts mm -hmm. movie, and and... Uh, for those that don't know, Mark and I are both huge fans of Best of the Best, and we think it's weird that you are not. So if you don't think Best of the Best is a good martial arts movie, let's discuss what you think does make a good martial sure. arts movie. So. Sure. And I think it's it's really interesting that he phrased the topic, the question that way. What makes a great martial arts movie? What makes a fun martial arts movie? Because I don't think there's another genre except possibly horror mm -hmm. Where you can have those distinctions, you can have a terrible movie that's still a fun movie. Yeah, that's fair. I don't tend to, I don't see that in you know romantic comedies or action films. Mm -hmm. But you you get something like Evil Dead Two, which yep. you know not really a horror movie, but I don't do conventional horror movies. It's not a great movie. It's a really fun movie. It's got a cult following, mm -hmm. and that's and that's probably the best way to think of a fun, not great movie is is the cult following. So what we're going to do now, uh, before we discuss this, before topic, we discuss this, we have this puzzle available at whistlekick.com with the martial arts radio logo. We're going to put it together while we talk. Why? Because we not? thought it would be fun. Why, Why not? not? <laughs> Why not? So we're going to move the camera around and some of it might get edited out. I don't know. And then we're going to start putting together a puzzle. And we're going to talk about this. When we're done, we will stop putting together the puzzle. We'll get back in our chairs and we'll say goodbye. We will probably not get the puzzle finished because it's 520 pieces. Maybe we're that good. Maybe Let's we are out. that good. All right. Okay. So I think anybody who starts thinking about this, the idea of a great versus non-great fun versus non-fun mm -hmm. you know we're thinking of examples is that is that where your mind goes to uh yeah i think that's a good place to start oh a corner oh i got one too nice here let's put those over here so we don't lose them let's see corner i probably shouldn't do that because that's gonna mess up the focus um we've talked a lot on this show about martial arts movies over the years and, and different martial arts movies and why they're great or terrible or both, depending on, excuse me, on who you're talking to, you know. Uh, but I think, and I'm curious if you agree, we don't all have the same expectations of, yep. of a martial arts film. Well, I think that's true. And I also think our views on how we see film varies dependent upon when we see them. Mm. Here, I'm going to put all the edges in this box. Oh, no, let's not do that. You want to use the other half of the box? Yeah, okay. because okay. why do we want this? Because we want, Oh, because we're going to need to see that. See yeah, that. that's a good call. All right. Um, 
when you think of the, the martial arts movies that you love, mm -hmm. do they have anything in common? Um, I mean, this sounds so cliche, but uh, there's martial arts in them. To me, there's you know some sort of uh, some sort of fighting doesn't have to necessarily be street fighting or tournament fighting necessarily, but there's some sort of physical interaction between characters in the movie. Sure, but that there's got to be more to it than that for you, right? There's got to be martial arts movies that you don't like, movies with martial arts that you don't. I, I suspect you probably like you probably have a, a wider acceptable standard for martial arts movies than well I you only say that because i like best of no the i'm not i'm not thought. just saying i'm not just oh, saying that okay. i'm saying that because i think you watched so many of them in the 80s mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you have a you're, you're normalized to those to a certain degree yeah and so i'm not saying i mean yeah we can we can poke at best of the best and and have fun with that for a while. But at the same time, there's a, a serious element in there in that you've seen so many more than I have. Yeah. Um, you know, what to me, what I like in a martial arts movie as well is I like that the things being passed on to the student mm. or the, the person learning is not magical. Like, in ter like, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna, all four corners. I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch some flack for this, but I actually don't know. Like one of the things that I don't like about the Karate Kid is there's this magical move at the end that he just does, and it's mm -hmm. like gonna win, and yeah. that's not realistic, right? You know, I liked that in the Karate Kid, Daniel had to actually train. He had to like work you, to learn things. You like the realism yes. versus the, the fantasy. Yes. And okay. you know, one of the things I liked about Best of the Best is that they actually trained. They weren't they realized in order to get mm. better, they had to actually work at it. And uh it wasn't just there wasn't some magical technique that they could do that was just gonna all of a sudden make sure that they could win. Yeah. I, I liked that about it. That's interesting. Because what I like in a martial arts movie is fantasy. I want to see things I can't do. Oh, interesting. I so want to see very things, different. You know, that's like my favorite martial arts movie is is Crouching Tiger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't balance on treetops. <laughs> I've tried. It hasn't gone well. <laughs> uh, and, you know, when I see a training montage, it's just like, I can do that. I can go work. And and honestly, that's part of why I dislike best of the best is because I see things I can do much better. Interesting. All existing right. in that film. Yep. Okay, I get that. I like that realistic part of it though. To mm. me, I, I because it it makes it it makes it real. It, I mean it makes it it's it's not a fantasy. Now now having said that. Are there mo movies that are fantastical that I have enjoyed? Uh, Warriors of Virtue. I like that movie. I thought it was fun, um, but I don't. It was in. It was enjoyable, but I think that goes in the realm of fun and not great. Sure. These are the whistle kick logo, like across Ooh, the top there. Nice. Okay. I'm not putting the edges in there, by the way. You're not putting edges in there. No, I can. They're all right here. I think we're gonna need that that space. Okay. But I had three of them together. That's, That's okay. Okay. Um, so I think that makes that is to me makes it different from being a fun martial arts movie mm. and a great to me a great martial arts movie. I think I'm trying to reconcile this because I don't I, I've never heard two people discuss the subject quite in this way. I mean, we're, we're seemingly in the exact opposite mm -hmm. place on the subject, but I'm sure if we walk there, I know we've watched movies that we've been on the same page about, mm -hmm. you know, we did those how to fight episodes and there were plenty of times where we agreed. Um, like we both hated red belt. Uh, I didn't, you didn't hate, hate it. it. Uh, I wasn't a super fan. I, I'm, I'm not a. I'm not. I don't. I'm not one that uses the word hate often. But we, I get what you're saying. We neither of us were big fans of that movie. 
And if you look at that, that's a movie that is realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, including the, the major flaws that I have with it are realistic. And if somebody wants to dig more into that, you know, we've got that episode. I forget what number it is, but how to fight. Uh, oh, what's his name? Oh, I don't remember. It's a it's a complex. His his name. His real name is uh, Chuito Ejiofor. Yeah, that that's the but name. But I don't I remember his for. name in the okay in the show, in the movie. All right. Uh, hmm. I'm I'm just trying to think of where to go. So with this, to me, what makes a martial arts movie is that that you know working towards getting better. For example, here's a funny one. Not funny. Uh, I a number of years ago, maybe about a year or two ago, um, past guest of the show Ian Abernathy did a video on what his favorite martial arts movie was. Mm. Uh, do you want to take a guess as to what it was? You'll never get it. Braveheart. Nope. Conan the Barbarian. I was closer than you thought I was going to yeah, be. Yeah, you're not wrong. I will admit, you were closer than I thought. Um, and his feeling was because it had the same he had the same sort of criteria as me that you have to work towards getting better at something and there were scenes in the movie where he was not good at sword fighting and mm. he stood out on the cliff working how to you know manipulate his sword better and and worked towards getting better and he you know physically worked at becoming better sure. as opposed to learning some magical technique at the end that would just beat the bad guys do we think we have all the edges? I think we're pretty close. Okay. Oh, all right. right there. All right. Most of them anyway. Uh, let me let me get like another box. Okay. To put these in. Well, we... Okay. That works. I found a box. There's it's a box. right here. It has dirt. Okay. Whatever. Dust. So I think to me that's what makes an enjoyable martial arts movie. Here's our corners. Okay. We don't know which corners which though. But that's okay. We don't. And I intentionally did that. So these two are the left side. These two are the right side. You can tell by the, the okay. orange to the yellow. Okay. Sounds good. So it could be I mean let's let's guess that it's this. Yeah, we'll we'll and figure it out as we go, go from there. Um, there obviously has to be conflict, and there has to be character development. There has to be some Correct. kind of progress, and that, and that's that's the case with, I'd say, every movie, not just a martial arts movie. True. Yep. If we don't see that kind of character development somewhere along the way, it's 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 hard to relate because you know. In instinctively, and I, this occurs in movies and books, and you know you want the characters to get better mm -hmm. as you go through. And so maybe I'm doing the black, by the way. Okay. Uh, maybe there's an there's an element in there where whether it's fantasy or let's say practical, conventional, possible. Fantasy versus possible. Okay. The the development has to be relatable. Mm -hmm. We've got to see something in those characters that we can see in ourselves. Whether we're talking, you know, Chow Yun's fat character and Crouching Tiger, or you know, Dae Han. Sure. This goes on that side. Okay. Right over there. Sweet. And I think that goes right there. I think you're right. you're right. Some sort, something relatable makes a difference. Uh, I think it, it makes it so that it's more. I was going to say relatable. <laughs> um, if it's relatable, it makes it more relatable. Yes, that is exactly right. My my uh, algebra two teacher is rolling. Actually, she's not dead, but she would be uh, because you've just used the identity property. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think. If you can relate to the characters, it makes it more real to you. Yeah. No. And that's not to say that you can't, like, you know, bringing up your idea of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, 
That's not to say that you can't relate to those characters, even though they can walk on trees and you can't. Have I mentioned I'm not good at puzzles? Oh, have I mentioned I really enjoy puzzles? And I'm, I don't want to say I'm good. Is anyone really good at puzzles? I don't know. But I enjoy them, and I seem to do well. Um, if I was doing this by myself, I'd already quit. Oh, really? I, I don't like puzzles. Oh, my goodness. Why the, are we doing this? The last, the last, see, like, that looks like it fits. It doesn't. Let me see. There's a, there's a, it's, that doesn't fit. That is correct. Those are not, those are not. I did a, uh, I had a Harry Potter puzzle up on the table. It took three months. Okay. Was it that it was Harry Potter and you just didn't enjoy the subject matter? I don't know. No, I, I, oh, there we go. I, I, I like Harry Potter. It was, it was all the, uh, it was the four, four house crests. Gotcha. So, um, where else do we go from here? Let's. How we, about we've got just... we've got a couple elements that I think we're in agreement on. There has to be the character has to develop, the mm -hmm. skills have to develop, and there has to be something that is relatable. Whether it is the character development or the skill development. Yes. And I suppose because we're talking about a martial arts movie, if the martial arts style mm -hmm. is relatable right like we talked about red belt it seems like that movie has a bit more fanfare in the bjj community okay than in the broader community because they see something there's another element of themselves they say that person's training what i'm training yep well and i think um i don't want to say red belt is a bad example but uh, the fact that there are so few BJJ movies, I think that makes a difference in this yeah, particular case. I would agree. Um, but but I, I totally get what you're saying. I actually got two pieces together. Yay! I got a lot together, see? Look. Yeah, I know. You're killing it. I am not. Um, so, I mean, I think that, that makes a difference, too. Um, I mean, I will also say, when I was a kid, I studied Gojiru Karate. It's and like the same piece, twice. Well, it could be. Yeah. It's almost identical. Um, and I loved that the person in the movie was Mr. Miyagi. Mm -hmm. Chojin Miyagi is the founder of Gojuru. So mm -hmm. that was like, ooh. And then when they finally got to the third movie and they, Daniel started to learn kata, he started learning Seunchin, which is a mm -hmm. Gojuru kata. So I was like, hey, look, this movie is all about me. Mm -hmm. I mean, not about me, but you know, my martial arts style is so I, cool. I see something in there that I... I Correct. do. Yeah, exactly. And you feel, you feel seen. You feel represented. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, and and uh, for me, that made a difference. Um, sure. So, you know, there's something to be said for that as well. Okay. Now, the, the, the topic at hand is not what makes a, a good movie, but a great movie. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the things that we're talking about are qualities of good movies. Mm -hmm. I okay. don't know that there's because I'll, almost every movie is going to have something relatable, some kind of character development. So what sets that apart? I I would say I don't want to say something unique, but something greater than the sum of its parts, right? Like we talk about Karate Kid and and that's the example I go to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it shouldn't be as good as it is. Okay. Say more. With the exception of Pat Morita, the acting's not very good. Mm -hmm. The choreography's not very good. The dialogue, the writing, it's it's all okay. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to point to anything and say, oh, this is terrible. There are some scenes in there that I'm not particularly fond of. But when you put it all together, it's pretty good. Yeah. All right. I, I get what you're saying. And then if you consider, and, and there's there's something to this that I'm, I'm having a hard time defining, where you are at, and it, I guess that has to do with the relatability, expectation. Mm -hmm. You watched Best of the Best back in the 80s. Yep. I didn't. Yeah. Would where you I'm know? at and where movies are at. Completely different. That's true, now. and I did mention that it, you know earlier that I think when you watch these movies does make a difference in how you will view them. Sure. Uh, I mean, this not a martial arts movie, but I you have gone on record as to saying you did not watch 
the Princess Bride. Yeah. As a child. And when you finally watched it, you would you were like, I don't get what all the hype is about. And it, you know, it took you a couple watches to maybe be like, okay, I kind of get it. Well, the second time I watched it, I watched it trying to imagine I was, you know, 14 years old. Yeah. Which from what I gathered was the target demographic. Mm-hmm. And it was it was a completely different experience. And and I get that. So I think you're right. You know, the these martial arts movies can be skewed a bit as to when you watch them. Not even close. Also not even close. Why are puzzles so hard? (laughs) I wonder what people are really thinking when they're watching this. I wonder if they've just if they've said well the the whole intention of this was that we would have some people who would listen and say, maybe I'll watch this one. We might have the exact opposite effect. We might have people that started watching. They're like, maybe I'll just go listen to this one. How do I zoom in on Andrew? He's put all of this together. (laughs) Jeremy's connected literally four pieces. I've got two pieces of two that I've done. For those that are just listening, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, six. I have one more. Seventeen more. Long. Nobody's hiring me to be on their puzzle team. If that's a thing, good so call. It's probably call. a thing. Um, let's okay. Let's talk about what because we, it comes up on the show all the time. The movie Best of the Best. Yeah. For you, like honestly and sincerely, what made that movie bad? For you, there wasn't anything that made it good. Okay, I can't point to anything and say, "I like how this was done." I like how this was done. I like how this was done. When I look at everything in there, to me, it's it is exactly the sum of its parts, which scores pretty low. Mm -hmm. I have one whole side, by the way. I've connected a few more pieces. As as you take pieces away, it makes it a little easier. For my you. my um, randomly binary search tree nerdy computer method works better. That's fair. So, you, in your opinion, which Mark and I both know is wrong, uh, best of the best had no redeeming features whatsoever. Not for me. Interesting. Okay. See, comparing it to. Karate Kid, Mm because I can say almost the same things. The dialogue was not very good. Mm -hmm. The writing was not very good. The acting was not very good. The martial arts was not very good. There, for me, it lacked the relatable element. Okay. Did you not, one of the things we mentioned as helping out making a good martial arts movie was uh, character development. You don't think there was character development in the movie? There was, you, 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 you know, things could have gone differently at the end there. I don't want to give it away in case people want to watch it. They should watch it. They should not watch it. If you watch that movie and you're screaming at your television, don't hold it against me. You can hold it against Andrew though. <laughs> okay. I hmm. think the beigey stuff goes like right here. This might actually go here. Yeah. And one of these is up top and one of these is down below. I haven't figured out yet which. Okay. But I'm getting there. I'm almost there. Oh yeah, that goes down there. Okay. You, you know what you know what the relatable part could be? Karate Kid is about an individual. Best of the best is about a team. Hmm. Good point. Yeah. I sure. spent I had far less experience being on teams Mm -hmm. as a kid. Um, And quite a few of those team experiences were not positive. I'm used to being solo. Interesting. Okay. You're used to playing in bands, Mm -hmm. which is a team. A team. And remember, a team is not a team if you don't give a damn about one another. I'm assuming that's a line from that movie. From Best of the Best. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that James Earl Jones says that. Yes. Yep, absolutely. This goes there. Um, I don't think so. I'm not quite. Nope. Oh. All right. What are some other martial arts movies that you personally have enjoyed that you would say are good 
Maybe even <sighs> great martial arts movies. The Jackie Chan stuff. The Jack, you know, Rumble in the Bronx. Those first three domestic releases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what was it? Rumble in the Bronx. The one that was like Police Story, like four, they got renamed. I know the one you mean. I don't yeah. know the name of it. But we can take Rumble in the Bronx. So I, I, rem I remember that one decently. I saw it in the theater. It, it had something, it had an unexpected quality in that the choreography, I didn't really know Jackie Chan's movies. I had mm -hmm. a friend who did. Yeah. And there was a fun element to the choreography that I'd never seen before. So it, it, made, it, it made it new. You know, th there are times where we watch a movie or read a book or whatever, and we, we like the rerun. We, we want to see that thing again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But generally speaking, we don't want to see the same thing done just by different people. We want something new in there. People will say, you know, like, I've seen this movie before. Okay. I think it's a perfect example would be uh, the remake of The Karate Kid with Jackie Chan. It did not do well, I think, partly because people wanted to see what they were used to. They didn't want to see the same old thing done with just other characters. Right. Let alone the fact that it wasn't the Karate Kid, it was the Kung Fu Kid. Right. That, that part didn't bother me that much. Okay. See, and I really liked that movie because while there were plenty of things that were derivative mm -hmm. in a way that I think a lot of people would look at and go, eh, you know, whatever. Uh, Jackie Chan's role going so much deeper emotionally than than the original did mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know it, it's that that portrayal reminded me of like robin williams in uh, um goodwill hunting okay like it, had, it, it was to me that that's what it reminded me of and so i liked it but you know i don't think of that as a great martial arts movie yeah i think of it as a pretty good movie that had some martial arts Okay, that's fair. So is that another piece we need to add in that the martial arts helps move the story forward? That without the combat, without that conflict, physical, that physical conflict, it doesn't quite work. I get that. Yeah, I could be on board with that statement. You're working that corner? Yeah. Okay. For those watching, I'm working the corner. I mean, sorry, for those just listening, Jesus. I'm working the corner. Yeah, I think you're right. The, the the physical training of getting better has to move the story along. I think that that does make a difference. I don't think this goes up here, but I'm going to bring it up here. And check Give it, it a shot. Oh, I didn't think it did, but it did. I wonder how many people are watching this and they're like, you guys are missing it. That, that goes one there. goes there. He put those two together, but they don't clearly don't go together. That sort of fits. That does not. I'll try that piece of paper. Hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, what are we missing? I'm not talking pieces. Oh. Um, by the way, it is much harder to think and do this than I would have imagined. Yeah. I'm glad that we decided to do this on this episode where it's just kind of a fun... You know what? This is kind of like a fireside chat. But without the fire. Yeah. Um, much harder to define, but like an inspirational element. Yeah. I think the best movies, the best martial arts movies, make you want to train or do something. And we, we know that from the fact that if we take Karate Kid, mm -hmm. Karate Kid made people want to do martial arts. That is true. We have a lot of guests that have mentioned that movie had an impact on their training, and, wanting to train. And another one that is held up quite often as a great martial arts movie that also had that effect, Enter the Dragon. Yep. Versus other Bruce Lee films that do not have as much of an impact. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think that's got to be part of it. It makes you want to train. It makes I you want to train. You're related. It's relatable. It's got something that you haven't seen before. If we think of uh, like Tony Jaw's early movies, mm -hmm. people loved those movies because they hadn't seen somebody move like Tony Jaw before. And I think that was maybe not critical, but in, it was important. It was an important element. It's something that I think that. Um, I think it's relevant. I, I think so too. I get that. Okay. I think that we have a piece in the wrong place. Maybe, maybe not. That does not go there. Yeah, I think I think we have a piece in the wrong place because I think that one goes there, maybe. Yeah. But now we need something to connect. And it's not that guy. Well, we could also be missing a piece. Uh, that's possible. Okay, this part is going to be really fun for the the listeners and watchers. Are you going to move the whole thing? Nope. I'm going to count this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so 12, 13, 14. Inspiration, 15, relatability. This side needs five more pieces. Five more pieces? Yep. Could it be any of these pieces? Assuming, yeah, it could be. Assuming that this like side that is, one. Assuming this side is correct, becomes that one. Yeah. Okay. So three more pieces. Does that fit? No. Okay. Maybe it fits down here. Possible. Yep. Okay. We're miss. We we are either missing some pieces. Or we have some in the wrong place. Oh, hey, that makes sense. Ooh. I made a valuable contribution to the process. Jeremy, I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Okay. And if that goes there, then we have the whole edge. Yep. Yay. Yay, we're done. The we puzzle. got the outline. <laughs> That's the hard part. So you can just call it good from here. I, I think, funny. I think this is the easy part. Absolutely. absolutely. I think this is where we should call it. Yeah. Because I think we're, I think we're done there. So let's, you know what? Let's not sit back in chairs. I can scooch over to you. Yeah. So if we, yeah, if okay. we. I, th I think it's interesting that it wasn't until we had the ins the, till the end that we came up with the inspirational part. Yeah, I think that makes a difference. I think I think that's probably what sets the good from the great, because I think of something like the first Ninja Turtles movie, mm -hmm. which if you were a certain age and you watched it at that time, that was a pretty important movie for you as a kid. Yep, it had a lot of things. It had things you hadn't seen before. Um, it had fun dialogue, maybe not, you know, great dialogue. There were some things you hadn't seen before, but it lacked a quality that made people say, you know what? I want to go train. Mm. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of ways that inspirational part could go. It could be, you know, you, you, you're larger than life. You know, you want to be a superhero, whatever. Whatever. Yes. Yeah. But I think, I think that's it. Anything else? No, I think I think whether we answered the question or not, hopefully this was fun. It was fun. It was different. We're always trying to do different things. And if you have suggestions on different things we can do, we want to hear them. Doesn't mean we'll do them, but we want to hear them. If you like what we do, you could buy this puzzle. It's available at whistlekick.com, and you can use the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. That was only like 20% of the reason I wanted to do this. Uh, the other... 80 was because I've been carrying around this puzzle for like a month looking for a way to do something with it that was moderately worthwhile because you heard I'm not going to just do a puzzle by myself. But what you could do if they want to buy this exact puzzle, the one put together by us, you finish putting it together, then we could sign it and they could buy that one. Specific one. 
we could get that puzzle goo and put a frame on it and we have some do like a donation to a charity somewhere who knows that's gonna cost a lot of money because that means i have to do the rest of the puzzle <laughs> but if you want to do all that let's hookick.com and buy a puzzle or something else hat shirt whatever mm -hmm. Uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. We've got the family page for all the things that you can check out to support us, like sharing episodes and all that. We give you a ton of suggestions. Whistlekick.com slash family. Seminars. Come teach a seminar at your school. Anything else? No. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.